my utmost for his highest or utmost video is that we don't want to be normal we don't want to follow the path taken by everyone and everyone else and do everything exactly the same you know kind of like a cookie cutter we don't want to sit down and say to someone you know hey you can't do that or you can do that as a matter of fact what we really want to do in utmost video is we want to look at ourselves to kind of examine ourselves you know cross-legged meditating <laughs> considering our ways pondering our means examining ourselves in light of the faith that Jesus has given us because God has called us to salvation many are called but few are chosen we want to pursue holiness and we want to pursue God with all our heart soul mind and strength and because we want to do that we choose to go a way that may not seem the same way as some people go you see we want to take up our cross and follow Jesus we want to crucify ourselves and our flesh to our desires for the world so that we could choose to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so that not only would all these other things be added unto us but that likewise we would see other people added into the kingdom of God because you see we've been given a precious gift something that's so unique and different that many other people take for granted that we know costs our Savior his life because of that that gives us great pause it brings us to sobriety and sober-mindedness it causes us to look at the world in a little different way than most people will because the world has nothing in us and the world has nothing for us because we choose to not live in the world as part of the world but we choose to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth and to proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ has risen and that he is alive and well and not only living in me he's not quite the roaring lion seeking to devour but he is crying out to a lost generation that's preparing itself to go to a war that it cannot win so we who live in these latter days choosing not to follow man and his ways we have something better today to share and to be a part of than simply politics socialism and trying to fix that which God has broken let's choose this day to follow after Jesus in all his ways and not to be caught up in any of man's ways or the things of the world you see it's very easy as a religious person to decide for ourselves that we're going to be part of some great revival <gasps> oh let's create our own movement something patterned after what we want to be you know we want to be some kind of mega pastor some mega church some mega ministry we want to be like the Calvary chapels or be a mega pastor at a Calvary chapel so we run to Bible school to be just like Chuck Smith or Greg Laurie or whoever your favorite Calvary pastor might be but you see there's something different about Chuck as opposed to all the other pastors there's something different about Greg as opposed to the other pastors there's something different about John Corson as opposed to the other there's something different about Rawl you see and Mike they have sat under Chuck as Chuck sat down and looked out upon what everybody else was doing at the time and said well I don't know that I really want to be like them or I want to do that but I do see some people over here who really don't seem to get it and they don't seem to know what they're doing the hippies seem to have no one teaching preaching or reaching out to them and so he was inspired by those around him true but likewise the Holy Spirit guiding him and has been prepared him for that ministry that God chose him to do to reach out to a lost generation of hippies who became later men of God surprise surprise but you see if you want to be a cookie cutter then you become a Calvary disciple 
But we don't follow a movement of another denomination or religion. We follow as God speaks to us, the Word of God, and inspires us to reach out to that which He has called us to do. Because many are called, but few are chosen. So God, in His sovereignty, decided that, hey, I have these people that need to be taught, so I need a, I need a man of God who has been trained up in church history and doctrine and to bring about this aspect of discipline and some structure back into this movement that is very much alive and well and living in the Holy Spirit. So God chose John Corson to bring a different kind of form and formula to the movement that we call Calvary Chapel. Likewise, when God wanted to reach out to a people that no one else would touch, that no one else seemed to be able to minister, there was Rob or Greg out in Riverside becoming an evangelist. And God bless him as a teacher, but he is an evangelist. And God chose him to move into that realm. And he is able to minister in areas that other quote-unquote Calvary pastors might not even want to go, but where Greg has dared to go and is willing to reach out and touch people where they're at. So God has used him in that way. Or Mike in prayer and the dynamics of what he's done in the spiritual warfare. Oh, things that most people don't even deal with on a consistent basis. But you see, in each area there was some expertise. Like Chuck Mitzler in his area of understanding and appreciation of detail in Scripture. They weren't called Calvary Chapel pastors. They were called men of God following after that which they've been taught. Oh, they may be a part of a movement that God has done. But you see, God could make you into a Chuck Smith. He could make you into a Greg Glory, a Mike McIntosh, a Raw Reese, a Chuck Missler, as it were. Because God wants you to reach out to whom he sends you, not where you want to be. You will not be a great glory. You will be likened unto Jesus. And God will choose to use your personality to reach out and touch people that you are familiar with. You won't be a Chuck Smith because you're not going to minister to hippies. Look around. There aren't that many left. <laughs> I think it was well done and they've gone on. <laughs> But there are people in your generation, this last generation, in the Armageddon generation, that need to be talked to. There's so many people that don't even know what God really is all about, or that God is love, or that really who Jesus actually is, factually, as opposed to practically praying and pretending in a kind of like feel-good mentality. You see, there's not so many people really out there that are willing to just simply say hey let's go see if God is real and let's discover for ourselves we whatever group you may be in and see if God might do something to those that are dropped their shorts you know that wear their pants down around their knees perhaps they need to be reached out and help to pull them up by their shorts literally because they don't understand what they're doing God forgive them for they know not what they do. Or those that may be in an ethnic group, like the Muslims, who have no clue that they've been deceived into thinking that a God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That they do not know this man called Jesus, who is real and alive, as opposed to what perhaps Muhammad had said of being distant and not a reality. For you see, in the religious realm, the Muslim is very faithful to practice a religion. But does he have a relationship with God? No, he has a practical reality that may make Christians envious of how often perhaps they pray and live out what they say. But the reality of needing a personal living God in our lives is something that only maybe you, if you have some knowledge or, better yet, 
no knowledge and God decides to use you to reach out to the Muslim today perhaps he sends you to Islam or perhaps he sends you to the Jew who in most aspects thinks he already knows what to do thinks he's already right thinks he's already got it and is as far away from God as hell itself because the reality is all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God so what will you do? what will you be? what have you decided to be with all that you are? What are your gifts and talents? What are your strengths and weaknesses? What is the thing that you have committed to God to do? Have you chosen to give your utmost for His highest? Have you decided to follow Jesus no matter what the cost? I want to follow God's only Son even if I'm the only one. I want to hear when I'm done, you did well, my son. What will you do? Are you giving your uttermost for His utmost? Careful infidelity. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body for what you shall put on. Matthew 6.25 Jesus sums up common sense carefulness in a disciple as infidelity. If we receive the Spirit of God, He will press through and say, Now, where does God come in this relationship? and he will line out your relationships and say where is God in this relationship where is God in that woman that you've married or not married but you moved in to live with where are you applying God personally in that relationship what are you doing about that relationship to your mother whom you will not talk to or you hate your father where is God in that relationship what kind of relationship do you have if you've born children and abandoned them where is God in that relationship? For have they not been born of your womb or of your loins? Where are you in their relationship? You see, God will invade your relationship because he wants you to bring light that you are to the subject. Nowhere does God come in in this relationship, in this mapped out holiday, until we learn to make him our first consideration. You see, when you sit down to examine your life, you ask yourself, what about your wife, your child, your children, your life, your job, your situation, every single aspect of every part of your life from the very hairs on your head to the very words that you speak is under scrutiny when you ask God into your life. For God is alive and he sees all, knows all, is aware of all, and extends his mercy and grace yet for a little while, longer, that you might discover all that he is. For as long as we can hear his voice and we have not hardened our heart, we have that opportunity to turn to him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. What will you do when you say you will live for him to the uttermost? Have you ever noticed what Jesus said would choke the word he puts in? It is infidelity. It is only, whoops, back up. Whenever we put other things first, there is confusion. We must learn to make Him our first consideration so there is no confusion, but God is always first in our life. We ask Him to direct our lives, not just in a vague and general way, but we sit down and in the mornings trust in the Lord with all our heart, meaning not in our own understanding, in all our ways acknowledging Him and letting Him direct our path so that in all our ways we are checking in to see him direct our path for if you're not then how is he directing your path and why are you not knowing what he wants you to do when he promised he would then know him better if you don't know that he's directing your path until you do you should not be directing your path you should be acknowledging him in all your ways you should begin to walk with him and disciple yourself to the point where you do know He's directing your path. Take no thought 
Don't take the pressure of forethought upon yourself. Don't plan. Don't get an idea that you know what you're doing. You don't. You don't know what tomorrow shall bring. It is not only wrong to worry, it is infidelity, because worrying means that we do not think that God can look after the practical details of our lives, and it is never anything else that worries us. The practicalities are what terrifies us. But what if God makes me? Then he shall provide. Have you ever noticed what Jesus said would choke the word that he puts in? The devil? No. The cares of this world. Notice what it says. What would choke the word of God in your life? What's going to choke up your faith? What is going to cause you to be fearful, terrified, and afraid? The cares of this world. What are the cares of this world? Is it not the politics that you've gotten involved in? Oh yeah, we have to vote this year, don't we? Is it not the job or the situation? Oh yeah, I need that promotion or I need to go look for work because I'm out of work and God won't provide for me. God can't take care of me. He created the universe, but he forgot about me. Is it your relationships that you think that you know you need to go take and solve on your own without the help of God? For after all, he doesn't know what a relationship is. He's only saved you by grace. What are the cares of this world? That which everyone in the world cares about, and you don't. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Isn't that what we care about? It is the little worries always that will choke us up and trip us up. I will not trust where I cannot see. That is where infidelity begins. What you cannot see is what you do not trust. Until you trust in what you cannot see, it is not faith. The only cure for infidelity is obedience to the Spirit of God. The great word of Jesus to his disciples is abandonment. It's interesting, you know, when I read that, I think of how I was taught that when you gave your life to God, you gave your life, all your life. And you abandon all thoughts and plans and devotions, emotions and considerations to just follow Jesus, no matter where. And you know, in my day, as a hippie, that was kind of easy. You know, we just jumped in our car and went. And when I lost my license at some point in time, I can't remember. How did I lose my license? Let me think. Oh, speeding tickets. That's right. I had too many speeding tickets, didn't pay them. Lost my license. So when I lost my license, I hitchhiked. So guess what? I walked. And I walked for years until I paid all those tickets back. But the point being is that when you abandon yourself to God, you don't care about how you do it. You care about whether you're doing it. And you see, that's what it is about God when he looks at your heart. He doesn't care how so much as he cares about whether you will listen and obey. Because today, you could choose to do whatever you want to do because all things are lawful for me, but are all things expedient. And expedient means, are they the best? No, they're not. Because though everything may be lawful for me, and I may be no longer under the law as my flesh is dead, so to speak, I still inhabit a body that suffers the consequences of the actions that I do. And because they are, I choose to do the utmost that God wants for me so that not only would he call me, but he would choose me to reach out to those who don't know him at all. Because those that already know him a little bit have already decided what they want to do about him. And usually, it's not to walk with him, but it's to complain about what they don't know who he is in reality doing in their life. Because God is at work to both to do and to will of his good pleasure, but he's also at work to present you faultless before the Father with exceeding joy. And that means that he's cleaning up your act one way or another. And so a lot of people who know him don't want him the way that they think they do. So the question always comes back down to you and I. How much do we really want to know? And how far do we want to go with God?